in terms of what it's done for mental health, um, which is obviously uh, today is the most talked about thing uh, in any sector, whether it's a podcast or a movie or whatever, mental health, it's mental health, mental health. Uh, and I don't think that it's purely ironic that we're in a place now where seemingly everyone is, you know, dealing with some version of mental health or, or they're in relationships with people. You know, it's like um, we're now surrounded by this epidemic of mental health concerns and issues. I don't think it's ironic that like social media and the Internet and all that kind of stuff has been sort of leading up to this crescendo of social of, of mental health concerns. Um, We've sort of seen it play out in documentaries with especially teenagers and 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 just how um how much they how much stock they put in social media you know you mm -hmm. have kids killing themselves over like their parents take away their phone and kids are killing themselves over stuff like that i know personally things like that have happened like that um you know i have i have friends who uh kids have left the house um, and moved out and lived with someone else because they took the Wi-Fi password away for a week because they didn't do their chores. I mean, it's just how much young people are, how much they are giving themselves to this, this like uh, online lived life is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just, it's a lot talking a lot about that. Um, that's like, obviously the worst parts of social media is like that people are killing themselves over not getting enough likes on their Instagram post. Uh, I would surmise that like even the best parts of the internet are sort of detrimental. Um, and by that, I mean, probably the best parts of the internet are that it is given us a lot of um, convenience. Uh, everything's kind of easy to find. Everything's easy to look up. Everything's easy. Like, um, it's a good Easy tool to, for that. It, it, it's a good it, tool for, right, for any anything you want to know or have or whatever. Um, I would say that even that could be detrimental to our existence as a culture. Um, the reason being several several different reasons. It's basically the death of want. Um, when I was a kid, and any time before you created a world because there was some void that you didn't have in your, let's say your town. Um, when I was young, I lived in Elk Grove, California. There was no hardcore scene in California. There was no like DIY punk, anything. We were like me and my skateboarder friends were like the ones who were like, we need to do this for our, our community, our culture here. Let, let's, let's make it happen. So we just, you know, like I said, I was signed to a record label by the time I was 16 because I was just so entirely devoted to the idea of playing in a band, getting signed, touring, doing all that. I just made it happen. There was no help from anything on the outside. That want that I had was by virtue of not having access to so many different things. Basically, the drive that you get to achieve is created by want when you don't have a want because everything is accessible and everything is understandable and you can find out how to do everything that want goes away and so does creativity on a certain level right now if you want to learn how to play guitar you go to youtube and you find the best guitar players in the world teaching you exactly how to play the songs that you want to know back before then if you wanted to learn how to play guitar you sat in your room and you listened to and justice for all and you guessed on how to play it. Through guessing, you came up with chords that weren't correct because you're 14 and you're just trying to figure it out. And in coming up with those chords that weren't correct, you're coming up with a new way of playing that you're now gonna bring and introduce into a band. And you're gonna play these awkward, weird chords that are, you know, they're n normal and natural to you, but it's not the way that the song was originally intended. What you just did there is you created something new you, that was like a, a birthplace of creativity. Now, if you want to play guitar, you will never learn how to do something innately creative. You will learn how to do it perfectly and you'll be really good at it because you watched it on YouTube. But you will not create anything new in learning how to get really good at playing that guitar unless for some reason you're sparked outside of that. Yeah. But I think well, most I th people I th learning. 
I think the only I think I, I agree with you to an extent, but I think there is an argument to it is that uh, uh, um, you got to know the rules before you can break them in the music. A lot of times, sure. I, I hear sure. that too. I mean, I was self taught, so it's not that's not how I learned. I learned more uh, more or less the way you described it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is the argument to the other side of the coin that is you know learn the rules before you break them kind of thing, and that 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 spawns a different kind of creativity. Sure, sure. And I, I did kind of both. Like I took acoustic lessons from a, a local guy in town. So I learned the basics. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I'm just learning, you know, p power chords, whatever. And then when I started listening to the kind of stuff I wanted to learn from, it was like White Zombie, Sabbath, Zeppelin, Metallica, all that stuff. Yeah. That's, that's when I started just go going like, I think this is what he's doing. And I'm not saying I came up with some crazy new way to play guitar, but I know from hearing even other people talk about how they learned how to play guitar like guys older than us like lemmy and people like that they would just listen and they would try to emulate and that like birthed some sort of creative new thing right. well i think you, you just know? touch upon one part that is that is there's no doubt is uh your own style of playing it maybe maybe it's something as simple as your own way of picking or something right. like that like right. maybe you are playing the exact notes at the right timing on the bars and everything but it has a different feel because when you know, Hetfield's doing a downstroke, you're doing an upstroke, you know, but right. you know, something, right. something along those lines is definitely something that can happen. And, um, you know, by happenstance might shape the way that you play. I mean, I was talking to fat Mike uh, a year ago or so on, on the podcast here and he's super unorthodox the way he picks the bass. It's completely like no one else does it that way. And that's just yeah. because he picked up the bass and started punk rocking it. Yeah. Know? Oh, totally. I mean, you know, like Brian may play with a quarter, you know, there's all kinds of, random things that have happened because of just people just needing to make do with what they had you know um and this is just one example one tiny example of right, how right, right. the the death of want is is so detrimental i mean another one is like we're in the amazon age where everyone expects that they can get almost anything within a day or two right and that's kind of just dangerous in terms of people's uh like how people's brains are categorizing like what is expected uh of the rest of the world as it pertains to them it's like talk about the world revolving around you i mean you can have anything almost anything within a, a couple of days um, i wonder the, i agree with you 100 percent. i think i think uh you know the the pandemic kind of taught us that things don't happen that fast right, right. um uh, and to that point it is you know Right now, the earth is uh, revol or the world is revolving around yourself. It's really boosting that ego of, you know, or maybe that brattiness that you don't want as a parent. Uh, you know, likewise, I can sure. think about that, how that would how that would shape my child. Um, however, I do find playing the devil's advocate on it here. I wonder if it's just going to be a time uh, uh, of learning how to adapt to it. Like maybe I think it is good to have all this information to be able to access it very quickly. We're not ready for it right now as a society and to your point as a culture. Um, but I feel like probably in, in time, hopefully we can teach the generations coming up a little bit about it and, and, and hopefully they can learn from themselves how to navigate it. Probably better than even we, we could because to your point, we grew up very differently. We didn't yeah. have these things. So we're having to learn Well, they're coming right into it. Maybe hopefully they can more quickly navigate this cultural issue than even you and I could. I would hope so. My concern would be that people like you and I remember what it was like right. before this, before this existed. We remember what childhood was like. We remember entertaining ourselves outside or, you know, doing something that wasn't necessarily a screen. My concern with younger people and future generations is that they're going to be so in, in, indoctrinated and ingrained in this culture where they have to have some sort of device. They have to be able to have access to that thing. They have to have tubing. They have to have be able to look up where you know someone's from or what movie that this guy was in. They don't have to access their brain power to do those things. They don't have to go, oh, what was it? What was it? They don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to stop and go, oh, what was that at all anymore? You're just you're you're not accessing that component of your brain. And if we Never Unless have Elon to look Musk up finishes that uh, that thing that's going to connect to your the brain. The Neuralink, yeah, the Neuralink. <laughs> yeah, now that now 
Now that's well, a see, little bit of both. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or is that it's just not, feeding you? Or is that just feeding you the information? That's what I that? think. I, I mean, it, I think the Neuralink's just doing the heavy lifting at that point. You're just sort yeah. of bowing out of using your brain. But yeah, I mean, you know, my my thoughts on it are are just that it's, in the end, it's destructive in more ways than it seems. I think the obvious mm. ones, the obvious ones are, you know, how it's affecting our youth. You again, going back to our generation. Um, I don't want to get too political here. I don't really like getting political, but I also don't think it's necessarily political at all. Um, when you and I were young, no one shot up public schools. There was bullying. There was guns. People felt awkward. What wasn't there when you and I were young? There wasn't the internet. So I feel like that's the only thing that didn't exist in the 1980s and 90s that does now. Well, the nineties um, did it, it. did kind of start in the nineties when we talk about the shootings. I mean, the the that was, that kind of started in the nineties as well. Sure, sure. I mean, but so did the internet. That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, I you know, I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just uh, I try to make sense of of the information that we do have and that I feel like I understand about what the internet is and how people are, you know, navigating it. And from my standpoint, it just seems uh, it seems like more destruction than it does seem like benefit. Benefic- benefit. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that, it's def- especially in the time that we are that we are in right now. Uh, I could I could definitely see that. And, and it is a uh, cause for concern when, like I said, we're, we're talking about, you know, the next generation of, of how because, you know, we are able to take a step back. And I think uh, uh, for me, it, it, it's about finding that healthy balance with my son of right. uh, of technology and actually just getting out there and, and doing some shit. And to your point about the uh, mental health, that is a big thing these days. And I think uh, for good and bad reasons, I, I, I wanted to touch on that real quick and just mention yeah. that like, it, although yes, it, it, they probably are closely knit and stuff. There's a lot of things that let, let's just be honest in the last 10 years, there's a lot of things that have happened that might spark reasons for mental health to come to the forefront. Sure. But also not in a negative way in a lot of in a lot of respects it's one of those things that i feel like probably has been needed for a lot longer to be Absolutely. on the forefront and just hasn't been there i know for yeah. me through my own um struggles with mental health and not and as i say struggles it's not even like earth shattering struggles except for to me i mean that's that's the thing about mental health is that it's a very personal thing um in the sense of personal not in the sense of like i need a i need privacy on it necessarily some people do, some people don't, but personal in the sense that this is my perception of what's going on in my life. And I'm dealing with the, with the, with what's going on in between my own ears. And that's what I need to work through things that are simple daily things and some things that are much more stressful. So, and everything in between. So there is a good side of that, that is coming out that I think, I think it's been needed for a long time. It just always had this stick. It's one of those things that just always had a stigma about it. And it meant that you weren't weren't healthy and it's like well just because you know you'd use it for other other parts of your body it's like yeah sure i i I go to the gym it's not because i'm unhealthy it's because i am healthy and i'm working at the gym you know what i mean like right right no i yeah i mean like i said there's it's again it's like the it's there's going to be good aspects to it and then there's going to be like negative aspects to it does one out does one outweigh the other and you know, I, I, that just kind of kind of comes down to opinion. It kind of comes down to what we're going to find out, you know, years and years after this has been a thing for a long time. I think the awareness of mental health and that the assets that we have now, and the fact that we're all comfortable talking about it, is massively beneficial for sure. Absolutely. Um, and just what what people have access to, and with regards to you know uh, understanding themselves and others and things like that, one hundred percent awesome. Um, I just worry that um, w- the reason we got to this place so rapidly where we need to figure this out uh, and it's such a problem and it seems like it's, it's it's we're sort of overflowing with these issues, I feel like is in part because of what social media, I feel like, sort of put us at breakneck speed to figure these things out. Right. I definitely... Yeah, there's no denying that factor of it too. It has thrown us into, you know, culturally, mentally, it's, it's thrown us into into a loop and a, a a road less traveled. 
It's it's not something that we're that that we're equipped. A lot of the scientists say our brains just aren't equipped for it at this point. It's just happening. It's all happening too fast. Mm-hmm. Like it's happening way too fast for us. And so we're trying to keep up with something that's impossible for us to keep up with because it's just it, it's changing so quickly and so rapidly. And and a lot um, of people would you know we, I know you said you're not a conspiracy theorist, but there's a lot of people that say, well, how did it come about something that's so that that is so advanced for us and. NASA sending stuff out into aliens, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sure. There's a lot maybe of theories my, there. Maybe it's my grandpa's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, what it was all, that's what it all ties back into in this yeah. conversation. Yeah, that's, that's a callback.